this episode is going to get a little bit spicy, um, but I think it's a reality check for a lot of people understanding the different business models, how insurance works, why being cash might be beneficial or why taking insurance might be beneficial and how specifically the multidisciplinary business model works. Um, as I say in the episode, I'm sure I will get some interesting feedback here and I am totally ready for it and I would welcome it. And so I hope all of you are having a wonderful week and we are in quarter four, guys. It's the fourth quarter. Let's go make some stuff happen. Talk to you soon. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the business school for the rehab chiropractor. Class is officially in session. My name is Justin Rabinowitz, and I am a rehab chiropractor on a mission to teach you, a fellow rehab chiropractor, the exact tools and systems I've used to build my own successful rehab chiropractic practice so you can do the same. I hope you enjoy, and please subscribe. So when I first got into chiropractic practice, like so many other people, my dream was to have a multidisciplinary practice. You know, when you're in school, you you think everything is perfect and you can build a practice where it's, you know, one patient comes in and you can offer them all the different services, chiropractic, physical therapy, injection, pain management, occupational therapy, acupuncture. I mean, you name it, we'll put it in one facility. So it's a one-stop shop for every single patient that comes in the door. And in theory, it is amazing and it sounds fantastic. But what I want to talk about today is why I actually think it's the biggest scam in our profession. Um, as I've understood business now over the last decade or so, and I've watched and observed dozens and dozens and dozens of multidisciplinary practices get up and running and operate, I think what I want to share today is how that business model works. So if you're a student out there or a graduate, whether you think you want to do this model or probably even more likely you're going to get a job in this model. I want you to understand how this actually works so that you can go in uh, both eyes wide open. So let me tell you a little story first. I interviewed a graduating chiropractor about 18 months ago. And when I we started to speak about salary, I asked her what she wanted to make. And the number that she told me, well, she didn't say what she wanted to make, but what she said was that I have an offer on the table um, for about $10,000 more than, you know, what an average, you know, salaried chiropractor would make. And the first question that I asked her was this, I said, by chance, does that come from a multidisciplinary practice? And she sort of looked down and, you know, stumbled on her words a little bit. And the answer was Yes. And what we went on to talk about was a scenario that was going to happen for her in her practice that she hadn't considered. So imagine you take a job at a multidisciplinary practice and you are the chiropractor. And in most cases, you are the point of entry. So a patient comes in with back pain and the first person they're going to see is you. And they come in to see you that day and they have sciatica going down their leg, which is a very common type thing. And you put them through the paces in your protocol. You do maybe a McKenzie extension exercise and very clearly and and interesting, you get to see that the pain starts to centralize from the calf up to the knee, to the hamstring, to the upper glute, and back into the back. And in McKenzie land, you would say, all right, pain is what we call centralizing. And this patient's going to be just fine. They need a conservative action plan, course of care, and get them up and moving, get them rehab, get them strong, get them able to move, and and they're going to be good to go. But an interesting thing happens in the multidisciplinary setting. The owner of the clinic is going to tell you that a patient that has ridiculous symptoms, nerve pain down their leg, the protocol is that patient goes to pain management. And that patient is going to get an injection, a cortisone injection. Why are they going to get it? Because that's the protocol. Now, they're going to tell you the reason why the patient is getting it is because it's best practice and that's what the patient needs. But the real answer is that clinic has to make money. 
And so let's go back a few more steps and, and break this down. When I interviewed this chiropractor and I questioned her on, on what type of clinic she was working in, the reason why I knew right away that she was making an extra potentially 10 grand right out of school from a multidisciplinary practice is because their business model supports that. Why? Because they often give people services that they very, very questionably will need. And most likely the highest paying service from an insurance company is going to be pain management. Now, listen, I'm a business person. I want to make money just like the next guy. I've been very deliberate not to have pain management in my practice. Why? Because I know I would use it. Why? Because I have overhead to cover and that doctor has to make money too. Now, before anyone goes off the rails, I have a few very, very good friends that do pain management and I will refer patients to them absolutely whenever necessary. Family members, friends. But... 90% of the people that walk into our door, probably more than that, do not need that service. And if you think that you're going to be able to build up a clinic and have pain management in there where nine out of 10 clients and patients don't use a service, you're crazy. It ain't going to happen. I'm sorry. So if you go back to how this person, how this doc coming out of school was able to get how they were able to get $10,000 more, it's because that clinic makes that much more money to be able to support it because a patient coming in is going to get all of those services. And so just to tell you how these clinics work, this is not, the first thing that they do is not about what's in the best interest of the patient. The first thing that they do is check the insurance benefits to see what services are covered. And then with that, they figure out how to maximize reimbursement. So if a patient has 30 chiro visits and they have PT and they have OT and they have physical therapy and they have pain management, that clinic is going to figure out how to maximize that value. And when that person walks in the door and they have amazing benefits and they're at, that could be a ten fifteen thousand dollar $15,000 patient that walks directly in that door that day. And if you think for a second that a clinic isn't going to try to figure out how to maximize revenue on that patient, you're crazy. That's how the game works, folks. That's how the game works. I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but I'd rather be the reality person now than when you get into it and see how it works. I There's a 100% chance that when this podcast comes out, two things are going to happen. The first thing is that there are going to be people that are going to send me an email or DM and be like, oh my God, you're exactly right. This is exactly how it works. I had no idea I got in there and it was, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And, this is, and I had to get out. It was horrible. And then I'm going to get DMs on the other end of people that do this and think that it's good and that I'm an idiot and that I'm a jerk for calling it out. And I, quite frankly, I don't care. This is, this is how it works. Either way, I'm good. If you are in the business of doing what's right by people, I believe you have to build a business around what you think is right. And going back to my philosophy in this rehab chiropractic space, forever and always, it's about two things. Number one, building a world-class practice. And number two, building a world-class business. And from an integrity standpoint, forever and always, what we always do is make sure the two match. So we had a conversation in our high-level mastermind group yesterday um, about patient visit plans and things of that nature. And I've told a story about a patient who just signed on for a plan with us who's 65 years old. She literally just picked up golf and tennis this year for the first time, and she just moved to Florida for nine months of the year. And so imagine this lady who's never exercised in her life. She's never played golf or tennis, and guess what? Now she's having back, shoulder, hip, knee pain. Well, of course she's going to have a problem. And so someone was asking about how long we treat that patient and what we do. The reality with a patient like that, again, this is my opinion, and I believe this. You, You won't convince me otherwise. That patient probably needs what we do in our practice forever. She's 65 and she literally has never moved a day in her life. And so if she has any interest in sort of retiring and living this life of golf and tennis and exercise, she's going to need us for a really long time. And I'm okay to look her in the eye and tell her that because I believe it. Because what we do in our practice, not only do we obviously adjust patients and do hands-on work and recovery work, but we're also teaching you how to move. We're teaching you how to live. 
or integrating you back into the sports that you want to do and have an active lifestyle and where that support system, that guidance. Now, if I had a guy or girl in there that was doing injections every day and she had an elbow problem, well, guess what? She's probably going to need all the time an injection in her tennis elbow because that's how it works. But I don't believe in that. Like I said, don't live, don't turn off this podcast and think that I think pain management is, is stupid. It's not. It's great. And again, we use it all the time. One of my close friends that I'll text and send patients all the time that need his help. I believe in it a thousand percent. But I don't believe, and neither would he, that every single person that walks in the door needs it. But when you have to pay the bills and you got overhead to cover and you got staff that needs to be paid, sometimes you might do things that are a little bit questionable. I think one thing that annoys me the most is that good people get caught up in this craziness. People that really genuinely, truly want to help people. But over time, again, if your salary is tied to it, and your bonus structure is tied to it, you're going to make the decisions that are right for that and might not always be in the best interest of the patient. So for you guys out there, if you're a student and looking for jobs, I'm not saying don't go work at a, at a multidisciplinary facility. All I'm saying is just know what you're getting yourself into. Just know what you're getting yourself into. The second thing that I want to bring up, because some of my student mentorship clients have talked to me about wanting to do a um, multidisciplinary practice that was all cash. Now, again, I'm sure there's out there, so you can come and DM me or let me know. I'd like to hear the model. But the thing that I wanted them to recognize was they were the the one guy I'm thinking of specifically, he's in New Jersey and the three or four business models that he looked at as what he wanted to do. He didn't understand that those were all not cash-based practices. They were all either in-network practices or out-of-network billing insurance practices. And they follow the exact scheme that I was just talking about. The way I talk about this sort of scheme is that the goal is to make one patient into five, meaning that that patient comes in and not only is a chiropractic patient, they're a physical therapy patient, they're a pain management patient, they're an acupuncture patient. So that one person becomes four or five, and then they figure out on the back end how to bill it so that they get paid for all four or five of those services. You know, the other thing that I wanted to discuss is just to remember what business that you're in. Um, Again, I don't agree with the model, but from a business perspective, I know the game they're playing and, and I, I respect it. You know, you have to realize once you get into that setting of that multidisciplinary mode of, of b- figuring out the insurance side of it and how to bill appropriately and get codes paid, you're playing a different game, right? It's kind of like uh, uh, that movie with, I think it was Leonardo DiCaprio, Catch Me If You Can. With the insurance game, it's always about catch me if you can, not not in an illegal sense. That's not what I'm saying. It's more of the insurance companies are always going to change the rules to try and not pay you. And then you're going to have to find ways around it so that you can get paid. Different billing codes, treat them on different days, different modifiers, do research, add other services. I know one of the big things recently around here was that... Um, they were limiting chiropractic and physical therapy services, but they were paying in full for occupational therapy. So guess what? All these multidisciplinary clinics got occupational therapists very quickly. Um, so again, understand the game that you're playing. Understand the game that you're playing. You, you'll have to spend the time. It literally will be a part of your day every single day of staying up on insurance and what they're currently paying, what they're currently denying, what, you know, what, who, what governor or senator sneezed and changed the rules. Um, that, that's always going to happen. And so you have to be up and aware of all of those changes because, again, insurance, they're not going to try to make it easier for you to get paid. They're going to make it harder because it affects their bottom line. The less they pay you, the more you bill them, And the less they pay you, the more they can raise people's insurance premiums. And the less they pay you, the less they have to pay out. So the more profit they make. And so they are in the business of making money. Um, I have stock in United Healthcare, and you know, typically, other than right now in the recession, that stock does amazing. (laughs) It does absolutely incredible. So as an investor, like 
great as a business model. It's amazing. That is a health insurance company. They're in the business of making their investors money. Understand that. They're in the business of making their investors money. So they are going to want you to bill as much as you can because they want to charge the in the person a premium higher. And they're in the business of figuring out how not to pay you because they want to keep the money and increase their bottom line so that they can pay out dividends to their shareholders. This is how the game works, folks. Whether you like it or not, this is the game. And if you're going to play that game, just understand the game that you're in. Don't go and start taking insurances and play this insurance game with people and be at this multidisciplinary clinic and then come back and tell me that you don't like to do the insurance. You better like the insurance. You got to like the game. If you want to play it, play the game. But don't go into it without, if you listen to this podcast, don't go into it without being warned first. Understand the game that you're playing. You're certainly not going to be in the business of helping people. You're going to be in the business of seeing what insurance will pay. Different game, different game, different game. So I hope that gives you a little bit of context for what game you will be playing. Um, and if it just to be aware, and if you're an associate or a doc coming out of school and looking for a job and wondering how the game sort of works, this hopefully opens your eyes to that. And if you're okay with doing that, no problem with me. I respect it. But again, I want you to go in with eyes wide open. So if any of you have questions, comments, concerns, I'm sure we'll get a lot of feedback on this episode and I am certainly ready for it. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And if you found this content valuable, here are four ways I can help you for free. One, grab a copy of my free guide, The Rehab Chiropractor's Checklist. You can get that at go.drjustinrabinowitz.com slash guide. That's go.drjustinrabinowitz.com slash guide. Two, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram at Justin Rabinowitz, where I post business content. Three, subscribe to my weekly newsletter by sending me an email at coaching at strive to move.com. And four, leave us a five star review so we can gain access to more influential people and bring those lessons back to you. 